and Brendan and we're trying to look for a footpath on the left that will take us up to the moors. It's just gone half 11. That journey definitely took a lot longer than I thought it would. But the doggies are excited. Are you excited Penny? Yeah. She's so excited and Bobby's excited and just his usual grumpy self that he had to get out of bed early this morning. But I'm really looking forward to just trying a new route here next moor. Hopefully the weather will hold out for us. Won't be too hot, won't be too cool, but uh, there's lots of emergency routes if we need to drop down off the moors anyway. Just heading away from the kind of main main road uh, that we were parked on and the river, and now we're just walking up to another little road that will take us to a footpath that will take us up onto the moors. So once we get on there, this footpath apparently is a river. Oh, what's that? <laughs> once we get to there it's just literally across the moors basically and then back down into Dune Valley I find it quite hard at the moment to judge how long walk should be and also how fast I should walk. Just because my beautiful girl there, Penny, is nearly 12 and Bobby there's nine and both of them have scoliosis and I also have a slightly twisted spine because I have a torn trap as a result of backpacking. <laughs> um, but it's trying to find that balance to make sure I'm not doing them more harm than damage, but equally, I know that they love being out. I know that they love just exploring new places as much as I do. So I'm still working on that balance, but I think they'll manage today and then they'll get a rest for a week, I think. <laughs> but they're good. They have so much stamina and they've had such adventurous lives, but they literally are my world and it feels weird being without them when I'm out on a walk. So I was just coming around the corner and I knew my footpath went off this way and I was like, oh great, so I've really overgrown. No, not really, it's just up a wall. How, how are you guys 
that's gonna get up there? What are we supposed to do about this? So, <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to ferry some dogs up and down. Oh, all right, come on in, let's get you up. Never mind, I decided to go back up the hill. I didn't want to risk carrying them up there and jar their spine, so go back up the hill and there's a track on the right I'll have to take instead, cut across. I could have been fun though. Where are we going? Let's try again. On the track. Come on, just want to get to the moors. Flat walking, easy journey, on a compass bearing. Life will be good. <laughs> it's really pretty how the hedgerows have got these flowers in them though. Where's that bench again? Where's that? <laughs> There's our path. And he's like, don't mind if I do. And just like that, we're off on the moorland. It's a little bit frustrating, because there's loads of sheep. And Penny, she likes paddles with sheep, <laughs> so she chases them. And it's very windy, which is fine. But it means you probably can't hear me, so I'm sorry about that. We're just going to keep walking south now, and there's actually little wooden pillars marking the way, so we'll just follow them. Look at the view behind me though, stretching across to the coast. It's always nice to have something to show you that you're on the right route. I've got this trig point here, 450 meters above sea level. And you see the car park over there, faint speck in the distance. We're headed to that and then we veer off to the east and on towards Dune Valley across this vast expanse of moorland. <laughs> Quite lucky actually, it's uh, not ridiculously wet underfoot at the moment. There's puddles and signs that it very much could be, but thankfully it's not. Mind you, I've got a big stretch of moorland ahead, so I might have to take that back. <laughs> We're now on this track here, and we're just gonna follow this for a little bit before heading off to the right. But I think this is a really nice mountain biking trail. I would like to bike this for sure. It's very easy walking, which is good. And uh, you see the view stretching over there. There's a valley to the right. Incredible. with navigating in the past it's very very easy to convince yourself that you're somewhere even when you're not so just like naturally make the lay of the land on here look like the lay of the land out here uh, and there's just a moment now where I'm a little bit unsure that I'm on the right path but I know that I need to cross a ford called Lankham Ford and I'm very much hoping that this is it. <laughs> There's only one path across. So 
We'll, we'll uh, work with it, we'll work with it. Ah, that's better, because that there is the path I wanted to come down. So, good. Okay, I'm happy. And look, Penny's going to be happy too. You're going to go in? Go in. Good boy, have a drink. Right. <laughs> You're right over there, Ben. <laughs> Let's try and cross over here. Uh, no. Nope. Oh. That's it. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So you can see here on the map there, we curve around. And you can see the trail stretching on ahead. So there's a bridal way and a track from the looks of it. We'll just go with the easiest underfoot for these guys, I think. Hey. The view behind me. It seems like the weather's trying really, really hard to come in. And, uh, Frustratingly, right at the off the point where the ground started to get a bit boggy, and I really needed to focus on navigation a lot. So, what I don't want to do is just wander off either down a water channel that looks like a path or just a sheep track. So, this is where practicing with compass bearings is very, very important. And actually, on that note, I'm just going to get my compass. You can see though just how featureless the land is. I mean look, it's not this is supposed to be a bridal way. Ah look, I just lost my shoe. <laughs> uh, and obviously I wouldn't define it as that necessarily. So I've got to be really really careful with where I'm walking. On foot, underfoot even with the bog, and also where I'm guiding the dogs, and also to make sure I'm actually on a path. Definitely bog country. Okie doggies, find your own way. Each man for himself. Each man for himself. <laughs> it's a bit muddy. Come on. That's it. All done. I mean, you want pear. Wet over there. It's always very reassuring that you're getting near to civilization when you're walking past people in jeans. So <laughs> unless they've ended up in completely the wrong place and that probably means I will be too it's, it's way, way too hot to be wearing a coat right now I think I've just had too many bad experiences in the last couple of weeks where I've just got absolutely soaked because I've been like oh, I'll just weigh it out and it didn't really go to plan <laughs> Having just passed through that like, you can see it there behind me, uh, stone wall structure, I thought oh, I'll just check on the map, see where I am. And it says it's the, where are we? Site of medieval village. So the little stone remains I can see around here in this little sort of coppiced area is the site of a medieval village. Now that is interesting. I wonder if any, look, you can see the path, the, the wall stretching down over there. I'm struggling for hands here, <laughs> but wow, that's really interesting. I always wonder what life would have been like here in that sort of time period. How different would it have been? And then why, why was the village wiped out? Was it the Black Death, the plague, or was it just hard to access? 
people migrated to bigger places. Who knows? Hmm. Oh, I've lost the path. <laughs> Where does it go? Let's go under here. Officially descending into Dune country. And then we'll walk along the river, along Bagworthy water, all the way to Cloud Hill and Cloud Farm. And then we'll sort of start heading back to the car. Mom's mead. Which way do we want to go, Pen? This way. Honey. Oh, all right then. <laughs> I'm trying to be as quiet as I can. There might be kingfishers along here. You just catch the glimpse of a flash of vibrant blue, and that's the most exciting feeling. So I'm really hoping to spot one. <laughs> They're having a nice walk. I've had a very good time. Yeah. I'm trying to save my energy. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You sit and talk to me then. Then you can control your breath and it won't be... Yeah. Oh, what's this doggy? Uh -oh. We're nearly at Cloud Farm, which is just underneath the shadow of Cloud Hill on my left here. It's a really great spot to camp. I've camped there before and you've just got the sound of the river as you fall asleep at night. It's really quite incredible. Just nestled away in this dune valley. Just coming into Marmsmead now. Do you know what's funny? I've been doing this walk since I was probably like three. That caravan <laughs> has been there. 
since the first time I did this walk. <laughs> We're just gonna stop here for a little bit, just rest our legs and then carry on. Want some water? Good boy. And Penny is going to want a treat day. You need that? Good girl, well done. Penny? <laughs> Bob, you can eat that? I'll break off a little bit for you. You can eat that? Good boy. Final stretch then, we are here at the car park, so options kind of either just take it level along the road, which I'd rather not do, just because it's annoying with the dog. So we're going to climb up into Southern Wood, past Southern Farm, back down to the road, and then follow this road all the way back to Brendan. So it's probably, one, probably about two miles left to go, and the time is nearly three o'clock. So we could be back for four. What do you think, bud? Can you be back for four? <laughs> Come on, then, let's take your leads off. That's it, you guys are so good. Look at a sheep bite. A bit bigger than you, aren't they? I think I'm gonna be down there. Never mind. Look at the view behind me. Stunning. Really tranquil. Go on then. Pasty. I think this is the last climb of the day. Just a short, sharp, sweet uphill. Nothing to get the heart rate up quite like walking uphill. Go to church. I'm so, you, have you been to England before? Or? Yes, this is the second time second. in the, uh, last year we went to Ireland. Ireland. So, uh, oh, cool. Yeah. Are you Sorry. Right from here? Uh, Sort of, still oh. Somerset, okay. but far away. Okay, okay. Long drive. And you're, dri you're driving now? Yeah. I'm not on holidays. No, no, just... Holiday. Yeah. With the... You know, this hill I've never walked up before. Obviously I've said I've done the Lorna Dune bit before. You know, I've grown up doing that route. Never been up here. It's pretty cool, I really like it. Ancient woodland, so you've got all the oak. I have no doubt in spring this area would be absolutely carpeted in bluebells. So I may have to make a return trip. I've been walking along really eyeing up the fact that there's lots of like blueberry bushes all along the side and I finally found my first blueberry. Mm. Gorgeous. And I think, look at that, and another one. Yay! <laughs> and another one. Hey, we might not ever get back at this rate. Actually, they're a little bit bitter. Mmm, man. To be fair, wild blueberries are bilberries. I need to get that right. That is uh, inaccuracy right there. So, yay, bilberries! <laughs> Here we are, back at the road. So it's just pretty plain sailing now, all the way to Leaford and Brendan, which is where we've left the car. I've just got to try and keep these guys moving. And there's a buzzard somewhere. There he is.
That was a great sound, I love that. Obviously we're not back at the car yet, but we're just plodding along at Penning's pace to Leaford. Um, but I'm just kind of reflecting on the route and how enjoyable that was. Obviously it's quite varied, Exmoor there's just hundreds of routes that you could do <laughs> of any distance. Um, and obviously one of the, the main environments we didn't touch today is the coast. But there was a really nice stretch of moorland with all the heather. And then we had the beautiful Dune Valley which is just a real delight to walk through and now we're getting this little road stretch which to be fair I really don't mind because it takes you through all the small unique settlements of Exmoor and it's a really great way to, to see the place so I'm just heading past this campsite now and it's so nice to see people out and about There we are, back at the car park. Not bad. And it's only quarter to four. Check us out. Here we are, doggies. How does this car take us? Is it back at the car? Dun, dun, dun. Made it. We're on pen. <laughs> Mommy's like, let me in. Oh, bye. There we go, we're back at the car now. Dogs are resting. My gosh, they worked hard. <laughs> but I really, really like that route. So I explored some new paths there, which I'm really pleased about. And now the final challenge is left down to me to try and get us home. And I have no idea what way the sat nav is gonna take me out of this valley. There are many, many hills that are like big, 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 big hills. And I don't know if little old Buzz will get me up them. <laughs> but we'll hope for the best. <laughs> Let's just see what it says.